What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Dead War. Let's play as the Kingdom of Grand Columbia. And in this episode we are assaulting the American capital of Philadelphia. Uh, we have reinforcements but I severely doubt they will be needed as the enemy force is quite either heavily depleted or is employed in small numbers. So let's crack on and capture the city. And then that means that the United States is very close to overall capitulation. They have one territory in the west, which is a former Iroquois territory, and they have Maine to the northeast. Uh, New York is also owned, however, they have a full stack bearing down on them and they have no garrison, so next turn they will likely capitulate without fight unless they are reinforced during the end turn phase. Anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Philadelphia is a critical target for this campaign. It gets us access to the next level um, naval administrative buildings and barracks so we can start to increase our military technologies. Actually no, that's that's a lie. We can get hold of those in Andalusia. The main USP is the naval college. I suppose actually I could just drop my artillery back here on this ground. Keep my horse artillery ready to move up, but I am kind of falling afoul of the horse artillery. Um, let's not get into that now. Just need to redeploy our line. Ideally, if I can get to this choke point. Let my artillery open fire how they choose. Enemy 12 pounders are in are in bad shape. I hear a charge. It's oh, the general's bodyguard. Let my foot artillery engage. That's right, cease fire. Well, my horse artillery may deploy to provide extra firepower from where they are, rather than needing to worry too much about redeploying. You can chase down those men if you like. If they break, they will come back. That's fine. They have not lost many men, and I was more focused on extending my line. Four map. Killed their enemy general. You're wavering, but you will come back. As soon as they, as soon as my guys start firing, they'll cheer up because the enemy will begin to collapse. The Royal Human focus on the general's bodyguard. Send my general in. See. Focus on attacking the general's bodyguard. Human go off the regiment of horse. They've come back as well. We form the line. Start to pick more precise targets. Which I suppose those are better targets for howitzers because they're in the city. Foot artillery focus on their conventional positions. Let's clone your line, charge the garrison Minutemen. Boy. Keep engaging.
Warm up and reload. Good artillery, engage that garrison Minutemen. They've advanced, which is a big mistake. It's put them very much within our master musket range. Being smacked by artillery. There goes the Minutemen. The Marines look upset to me. Excellent. Right, so. Let's add a bit of a point to our line. You men hit Marines, you men hit the citizenry. Your regulars are broken. Two men form up as a barrier. Something like that. We target all my artillery against center. Both my howitzers go after the firelock arm citizenry. Explosive shells just aren't worth firing. You may as well fire round shot. They're more dependable and more accurate. You men keep firing. broken. The okay, unit of line infantry is coming back but they're going to be under fire from everybody. Let's do something like this. The new men advance towards the next target. Engage them with artillery fire. Leveled a house, there goes the chimneys, they've collapsed as well. They're going to bayonet charge us. And this infantry can push up the flank. There goes the armed citizenry. position and start reloading. Although they are under fire. And there they go. Now it's everybody engaged in militia. Pretty happy these two units will manage it. We are effectively going to outmaneuver them, force them to abandon their position. Didn't even get a look in. Yeah, those guys are definitely gone. Not that they'll get here in time, but let's get these guys to run up the top of the hill. So they're within range to engage. It's not really the positioning or the this there is a rise in the ground which is a bit tricky. But let's storm out with everybody. You'll have, we'll force them to abandon their wall. They'll lose their cover. And we'll be able to annihilate them. Everybody engage the militia. Advance. They'll have to abandon their wall at some point. But she wants these guys to begin firing. A lot of muskets arranged against them. They've started to waver, they've lost nine men. Yeah, they've been outflanked. They've lost 60 men. That is it. The 6th Regiment of Militia was all that held the city, and that was enough. It wasn't enough, rather. <laughs> Instead, they were annihilated.
city is ours. The the, uh, the army the, uh, the garrison the population broadly likes us, but not massively. Yeah, they have some troops there. We're pushing on Albany. Soon we'll take Falmouth. This army that's replenishing will advance towards Niagara. Too much given the order now. So let's combine more infantry units again. So you can combine them. Excellent, you're a little bit closer. We don't have any money to repair or rebuild anything. But that's not so terrible at the moment. In terms of finances, come on, Netherlands. Pity. What about you, Genoa? Nope. Not giving you Georgia. Portugal. Not giving you... I mean, that's not bad. 90 grand for Hispaniola. Objectively, that's a fantastic deal and you should take it. Personally, I really don't like giving up territory. So no. <laughs> Let's sit in turn. 90,000 is... That's a massive, massive, massive amount of money for that island. But it's a good island. Uh, opportunity to intercept. I mean, I'll just auto that. Chew them up. Yeah, they recruited one unit in Albany. This army is a bit depleted. Um, do I want to fight them? Absolutely. You want to lure these guys in. And force them. Force them before our guns. We've got a good amount of artillery. We've got a huge amount of firepower. They have no artillery. They have to come at us. So if we just set up ready ready to defend, the enemy will have no no means to actually resist. Ooh. Fighting in the town. That's exactly what they want. But I don't want to do that. I want to fight outside the town where my artillery advantage can be applied. Watch my artillery advantage, my overall firepower advantage. Something like that. Let's get ready to drop three out on the left flank. Gives us a rather healthy reserve. Plus some cavalry, plus a howitzer just to start chipping away. So it's not optimizing, but I'm going to drop two infantry units there just to keep two. So I've got two units doing fire by rank, and my militia are going to be here just to fire through these access points when the opportunity arises. The howitzers are going to focus on plinking at the general, and I am going to speed up time. Good hits. It's a good time for this garrison army to get bloodied. Okay, let's not focus on the General's bodyguard, because they are going to get shredded. Try to hit the General's bodyguard with canister shot. Let's kill the bunch of crewmen. Bunch of uh, staffers. go. It's one colonial traitor we, we've not yet killed, I suppose. Should really have been able to have taken them out. Push my infantry forward just to sweep away the guerrilla mercenaries. Maybe both my cavalry units get out here, actually. 
canister shot. I killed 25 of my guys. Not a terrible result. You men just eviscerate the mercenaries. Oh, let's just go after this unit of Continental Marines. They're being left behind. Tribal Auxiliary is going to get up here and start shooting. These units are going to advance ever so slightly. You then put a volley into those mercenaries. You should start. You just graze the back of the mercenaries, and that's enough to shit to get them to run. Pivot the flank. Canister shot. We're going to start to roll up the flanks soon enough. Get my militia in here. All my cavalry go after the content of marines. Let's pivot up. They form square, but they form square too late. Well, that's, that's a lot of my cavalry that's going down. But they didn't form it too late. Kill the enemy general. Get one of you to focus on the marines, the other one to go after the mercenaries. Minimum have broken off. Guerrilla mercenaries are forming up. These mercenaries have had enough. Artillery cease fire. Wipe out those marines. Let's continue. So you get those last marines. And come after these mercenaries. You nearly wipe out 32nd. Go after some more troops. You go after these guys. I mean, this is we're just mopping them up, and this is why it was advantageous to intercept. That's right, some of you stopped to try and defend yourselves to buy some time. Don't you may manage to escape, maybe. No, you did not. So there's a unit all the way over in the corner. Take out, but let's just focus on this spread out unit of Minutemen. 
I mean, you can't imagine Minutemen are that much better than Militia, but they are, and you only get 188 of them, which is the same amount you get in an elite unit. So it's kind of the worst of both worlds. Maybe they're really cheap. Um, if they're really cheap, maybe, but even, even so, you still may experience a, a poor cost benefit. Uh, counter offer. You know what? I could be lured into having a, an alliance. Because they're now allied with Britain. Send proposal. They really want Georgia. They really want Georgia. France is going to turn on us if it, at some point, and it won't take long either. I think this turn we need to try. If we can get an alliance with Britain, that'd be really useful, because then it might tie French efforts up in Europe, leaving me to only have to worry about the threat from the West. Persia's on the move. Mm, so you also want Georgia. Gustav, you're not going to get it. See, if you want it, you have to come get it. Please don't declare war on me. <laughs> At least not till I've got a good navy. They must be moving a lot of troops around inside Sweden. I mean, if you attack Russia, that'd be fine. Just expand into Russia and take out their territory. That'd be just fine. Because I've seen... I don't know, I, I, I quite like how Prussia is expanding quite massively. If Prussia becomes the next superpower, that'd be pretty awesome. You and your long walk. It's been such a waste. Construction report. Okay, you've got a new port. Okay, let's... Continue with my... Try and build at least one port and one road per turn. Right, now we've got to focus on the garrison at Philadelphia. We can replenish, we can repair the university, we can build the coaching in to try and offset the unhappiness increase that's going to cause, and we'll repair the observatory, but that, and that'll add some happiness as well. Let's get, get cobbled roads built as standard. Get the naval ball up and running, let's get the academy up and running. The capital to get us taxes. Actually, we can do them all. We can. Good. And we've still got 2,300 to spare. Britain, Britain, Britain. Very friendly. Request alliance. Uh oh. Request alliance. And technology. Oh, good God. Okay, yeah. we got a lot of work to, get work to do on the uh, research front. At some point, when... Your next town grows. We can. We need to build a university here so that we can get our modern university. But right now we are very much the the low cost underdogs. You got. You haven't got cobbled roads either. Let's get those going. Not, not much money for replenishment, but I think for this turn, you're just going to siege Albany for now. You're going to push on towards Niagara. You're going to hold 
and then at some point jump on to Falmouth. I'm hoping these guys may try and come to the defense of Albany, or these guys come to the defense of Albany. We'll have to wait and see. Five turns till we get Puddling Furnace. I think I might have to try and get Advanced Irrigation to boost my food population to get my towns to grow in Bogota. Our money situation's okay. It's town growth we're really interested in. Yeah, but you're panicking now. <laughs> uh, auto chomp. <laughs> uh, Britain, 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 Britain. What are you gonna do? Same, same deal. No, I'm not even gonna bother trying to negotiate with you, in the United Provinces. What I really like is to knock out the US and get a few turns of a few turns of peace to be able to invest the way I need to invest. Beef up my navy, beef up my economic infrastructure. Just try and catch up somewhat. Because the the fact that the big factions are so far ahead of me in all these technology matrix metrics is really bad. But it's not terrible because I've got by by rank, but what I mean is it means that their their line infantry, for example, are going to be better than mine in melee combat. Their ships are going to be better than mine, you know. Ship, you know, in terms of you know, their fourths are going to be better than my fourths. So I need to get a a technology overmatch rather than parity. That could be part of the reason why my ships suffered so much in the battle against the United States, if they are as far ahead in tech as the other major factions, then yeah, that might explain why their ships were able to do, to uh, put up with so much more punishment than mine. This is why we need more universities. But he's now with when New Haven's built, Philadelphia and Boston should be able to generate a few extra uh, gentlemen to boost that University's tech research. So I'm not feeling desperately urgent for quicklime. 16,000 gentlemen in New Andalusia. At some point we have to spread these out. New Haven. You are going to... Try to find a quick win, but I don't know if there is going to be any. Maybe some of the... Yeah, longitude watch. Increase the range of my ships. That would be useful. Or well, lime juice and sauerkraut might be more immediately useful. Because it reduces our upkeep. Port blockaded. That's fine. It's not going to be a problem. Okay, so in terms of my ports... So now it is Cuba looking for an upgrade. A road upgrade. You're replenishing. Push these units up towards this eye because they are fairly knackered. 5,000 to spend. Farms are okay. You're currently maxed out on your export production. You're currently okay. You're exporting it via Pensacola because they're your adjacent, adjacent territory. So let's get some extra cotton production on the go. You're not far off of finishing the conversion of Charleston. There's the beginnings of a navy. Third rate, second rate, second, third, third. Potentially could jump on them, but I'm not overly bothered about doing that. You've got Providence to grow, but that's not a huge deal. Taking New York will be good, but the main the golden fruit is jumping on Niagara, 
taking it and then knocking out Falmouth. Because Niagara will likely bring us into conflict with the Iroquois Confederacy. <laughs> Apparently it's 50-50. I'm not so sure. Ah, uh, they raided. That's yeah, fine. Raids are frustrating, but not critical. They're definitely going to invade us. I know it. But I'm not in this. I don't have the strength to repel them the way I need to. I mean, if they start war in, if they start war in in, in general, no. I don't care that you're offering me an alliance in Georgia. Right now, I am not worried. And Georgia would cut my territory in half. If they asked for Florida, maybe, because it's nicely tucked away at the bottom rather than splitting my empire in half. Yeah, there are so Sweden is deciding to move all of their units one at a time. That might be feasible in the short term, but in the long term, it's going to uh, cause us a lot of headaches. But I think they're probably not going to do it for too long. There we go. 20,000. So Albany is ours. It's going to be this army that's not very cool. That does the job of taking... Falmouth. So let's just combine some of our weaker units together. So, first of all, you just they refuse the surrender, so we will take it from them. You men replenish. Hey, we have an agent. Get over to New Haven. Don't duel. 400 to repair the... To repair the... Uh, 400 to repair the university. Let's send... Cavalry unit out to occupy New York to prevent it from being used by enemy raiders. We don't have to worry about lose just yet. 17,000. Hold go in, get a commercial basin. There you go, we're slowly bringing metal roads up the coastline. They cancelled the production of my coaching in, which is a bummer. So can you chaps pull out of Boston? You can. You can't... You're going to stay in because you can't quite make it to Falmouth because I brought in... Okay, right, let's start off with... Okay, right, not you. In which case, then, you... Actually, it doesn't really matter. I was about to say, they're going to... I can use them to boost my troops. And you go, yeah, but by one. Pull out, and let's go after Falmouth. Let's destroy the United States once and for all. Actually, let's pick my most experienced. Let's take a native auxiliary unit. We can crew an admiral from there. Steady under fire, soldier from birth. You've received a field commission. Let's take out these American swine. Bring Falmouth into the fold. And then that will... I think that will be the end of our active conflicts. Except for maybe... Sp no, we're at peace with Spain. Um, but yeah, then we get some, we'll get some time to just spend our money 
upgrading our economy and just shoring her up a bit, build up our navy a little bit, that'll be pretty slick. Drop my guns back on the high ground. People have asked before why you just don't really move my artillery. It's because these 12 pounders, they could shoot a long way in Darth Mott. So let's see how it's how it says are a bit different because they can't shoot as far. Form out my line. Form my militia brigade on the right. Group my cavalry together. Yep, they have deployed behind the town, so we will advance towards it. Militia Brigade may be the first to see action. Unlimber. My howitzers, lots of good stuff within range. Okay, let's send my infantry to run because it looks like the enemy is responding. What I want to do. Just take the advantageous position and then annihilate them. These guys all got mustaches. Oh my god, they have. I must admit, that's something later Total Wars have got a bit better at. They've got a bit better at saying, actually, everyone's not a homogenous mess. Instead, people do have. People do vary. Some friendly fire is to be expected here. Charge in and bring them to book. So my militia brigade can advance up the wings. My infantry is going to chew up these dragoons. There goes a garrison militia unit. There goes some volunteers. Push, 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 push. You're gonna have to try and hold them off. So the left flank's looking pretty good. You managed to catch them on the hop. Kill a few more dragoons, that'd be pretty sweet. Limber, get into position. Let's get some artillery support. Oh, Bowman Auxiliary, that's they're not very fun to fight against. Human in advance up like so. Excellent. There goes the 
Data Bowman, they're shattered, excellent. Bring the cavalry back. Okay, my left flank looks pretty secure. Looks fairly secure. Let's move some men into town. We can still keep some infantry as a blocking force. Advance up just a little bit. Form square. General's bodyguard getting involved. One gun team focusing on tribe auxiliary, one aiming at the centre, howitzers drop shells into this mess, although they are in a crossfire. General, fire at will. Focus my artillery on this flank. Excellent. Getting some men. Some men here are collapsing. So the whole front may be collapsing. You men get in the farmhouse. Let's redeploy my militia. You men kill the general's bodyguard. Still just broken. They may still come back, but let's deploy them a bit more, a bit closer to the where the action is. Excellent. Militia format. Even advance. Push up, push up. Even hit the militia from one direction, you hit them from another. Oh, you, yeah, you can fit in the farmhouse. You men get in. It looks like that's the only units left. There we go, the volunteers came back. Smash them. Can you men keep attacking? Just mob the general's bodyguard. Where is the general? He's in there somewhere, isn't he? Maybe he isn't. Are there all that's left? Struggles of the general's bodyguard. Let's just speed that up then. Ten of them left, 111 of our guys killed their general. And there goes the United States. Our position in the Americas is secure. Whew. Let's repair the government building. Let's build some basic roads. Let's get this army replenished. Three grand.
What's the best use for three grand? Well, one use is recruiting two sloops to occupy these ports. Those would be pretty nice to get up, get completed. Not going to do any upgrading here yet, just to see what um, the aircraft position is. Other than that, let's upgrade a, let's upgrade a weaver's cottage. Hey, we have an agent. Let's get up here. Get up to our center of learning. He's making that journey much faster than he would have done. Thanks to the new road building infrastructure. Nation destroyed United States. Ha <laughs> ha! Victory is ours. Let's hit enter. So ideally I'd like to spend a couple of turns upgrading my ports, building up my navy, upgrading some of my factories. Just all the good economy stuff that you don't get a chance to do. Because you're... You don't get a chance to do early on because you end up um, just being constantly focused on engaging your enemies at war. France, it looks like, it is still at war with Britain, which is good for us. Apart from that, I believe everything's in Europe's coming up quite. See, that's again, that's quite good, but again. No. No territory. If you want territory... Oh, I was about to... Ooh, Fran Prussia is at war with France. That's very interesting. If France is destroyed... Then the century United States becomes ripe. Up for grabs. We probably need to take out the Iroquois Confederacy if we can. They only have one territory. The rest of it is France. However, they may... Be allied with France. May. Oh, Sweden just took St. Petersburg. Well, they may have had it originally. I've just noticed, though, that, Swede that, that the port in the province of St. Petersburg is now a Swedish flag. Not terrible for us but we've got a lot of catching up to do so the more squabbling these guys do the better because we really want to be focusing on our position in, in the US and that means looking towards looking towards uh, Quebec as well and the Huron in the northwest and I think the British are still there so that's something to be aware of as well in future they may well become our enemies. Ooh, bit of a <laughs> bit of a delay here with Sweden. So I think Sweden's deciding to try and chug the game up. Although you have to wonder if it's just because they're trying to work out what's the best way of getting troops from Sweden to maybe uh, St. Petersburg. And they're kind of going, do we go by port? Do we go by around by land? Or we can do this, or we can do that. Um, but it looks like I'm probably going to chop the recording. And see you guys in a second. Yes, see you in a second, guys. And we are back, and we are recruiting our some of our some more uh, American gentlemen. Excellent. So, we two commercial basins, one metal roads, three sets of cobbled roads. So, we've got two more fourth rates in my main fleet. These ports have been upgraded. I want to change the fishery. 
we'll swap it over for a for another trade port because we just need the money let's upgrade new york to a commercial basin let's repair this punish you guys We're getting metal roads, so will you. 15,000. That's a good amount. Let's upgrade the Savannah government building. Let's upgrade the water powered cloth mill. Ooh, abundant yield. Are you actually exporting any of that? You are exporting it successfully, so let's go for it. Let's go for. Military Governor's Mansion. I want to focus on the East Coast rather than Niagara. I mean, I can upgrade, do things like this. A cheap fur trader upgrade. It's not bad. But I want to focus on upgrading coastal states. One more turn till you get your dirt roads. You haven't even got, you haven't got dirt roads yet. So in terms of my most profitable regions... New Granada is still top dog. Then it's Cuba. Then it's the Carolinas. Pennsylvania. Where is Boston? Confederation of New England will probably get a boost once Providence is built. Because then that will give them two trade ports. But then again they are throttled by having a happiness building and a university building. Because um, neither of those... The happiness building may contribute to growth down the, down the line. But it means we can recruit American infantry mercenaries. Which is pretty slick. No Spain. No bonuses. No no territory. Oh, they're gonna declare war on me, aren't they? Hundred percent. They're building up their their armies both um, at home and overseas. That's what's going to happen. Well, either way, our economy should be... Well, is, is now a lot stronger to withstand people blockading our ports. Prussia, Prussia is just... Oh, Prussia's just taken France. And depending on if the French own Corsica or not, that may be the end of the French faction. Although actually it can't have been because they already lost Paris, but still existed. So they must still own Corsica. Either way, that's not bad for us. Anyone? Straight tech swap. You know what? I'll take I'll take whatever tech I can get. We do not have tech advantage. And if, I, if, if it means I don't have to research improved grape shot to get something else like that, I'd rather have, then I'll take it. Even though it, it, the tech itself isn't super great, because you don't really use grape shot um, in naval battles. You're Most of the time you're much better off either pounding them with round shot just to destroy the hull, kill people and destroy guns, rather than firing grape shot to, to maybe kill the crew. I've even tried firing it at ships that, that sit lower in the water than the than mine, so my guns have a really good clear shot. Again, these are all really good, really, really good deals. I just can't do it. I'm not desperate enough to take it. Even though I could feasibly reinvade and take it back quite quickly, I just don't want to be at war with these people. Right now I've got quite a good little territory going on. I don't want to cause any problems. I don't want any grief. Hey, no no uh, dilly-dallying either. Let's upgrade Luz. Let's upgrade Plymouth as my port upgrades. You're getting metal roads. Now are you. Now are you. Okay, iron workshops. Let's get two more forts. We 
I'd like to recruit some African mercenaries, but I'd also let's upgrade the ordnance factory. We aren't really researching military techs, so we can't really upgrade most of our artillery or infantry buildings. Let's upgrade the sugar warehouse. We don't need this in Albany. Let's replenish this army mostly. So the Iroquois themselves. Protector of Port. Oh, wait. Oh, they're allied with Britain either way. That's, that's the big blocker there. See, they've got a big army there. They've got a, a small force off the coast. Let's recruit some frontiersmen. So our economy, 34,000 next turn if they leave us alone. That's a lot of cash. That's a lot of cash. Not as much as some of the other nations, but you know what? We'll, we, we, we'll take what we can get. If I can max out my economy, eventually I'll run out of things to spend money on, and that means I'll have to increase my navy, and I'll have to increase my army. Although I think I should stand up another force in New Andalusia as a bit of a response force for whoever tries to invade us. It's not impossible that France decides to lash out. Sensing weakness at home, they decide to get more offensive abroad. I imagine they're gonna. Prussia's gonna experience some significant uh, rebellion problems holding France unless they do it properly, which the AI normally doesn't do. So the ship that just got beaten all the way in northern France that fled all the way to the eastern Mediterranean is going all the way back. So they're meeting up. Well, it's a different, it's a different ship. I thought they were going to meet up together. They're a little bit of pirating, but they decided against it later on. deal. We'll get there by ourselves. We'll research the technologies. We've got two universities with a bunch of good professors in there. We'll sort it out. I think after I get the irrigation technology I'll probably get that university just to sp not speed run exactly but just go down the Philosophical technologies to try and boost growth and tech research rates. Well, I'm fairly sure they're at the they're at the maximum building level that they can get outside of my capital. Is Sweden going to start chugging again? Was that a one-hit wonder when we sped through it? No, it was okay. Okay, so just 30,000. We have no more ports to upgrade, which is nice. Let's upgrade two of these to cobbled roads. More ports. <laughs> Hello, boys. Is it so easy? No, we can't move you. Okay. You men go back to Philadelphia. You men get aboard this... Oh, no, you're not replenished yet. Oh, that's okay. They're only pirates. Take the pirate rebels. 
Yeah, just a bunch of native troops. They might get... Actually, no, that's their entire force. They get no extra garrison, so... We'll take it into the fold. Uh, the governor's palace. Replenish the army. Repair the port. Repair the port. Excellent. And then Caracas. Recruit a handful of units. Let's recruit two thirds. 18,000. I mean, I'm not massively opposed to a military governor's barracks. I just don't think it's the priority. Let's recruit some mercenaries plus some irregulars to help hold the territory. Let's upgrade a bunch of farms. Get more production of pelts. Upgrade the governor's palace. You guys will come around. How goes the conversion of the people of the Carolinas? One more turn and they will be 100% Catholic. Then it's up to Williamsburg. And Annapolis, then Philadelphia. Nice. But looking at the timer, I think I'm going to end the episode here. So, thanks for watching, guys. I think this has been quite productive, this episode. Um, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.